Okay, so let's take a look at how to do this on StatCrunch, how to run this test here. Uh, so you have this contingency table, okay, or these tables of values of these categorical uh, variables. And so we're going to run a test to see if, um, again, looking at our um, situation back to uh, what we're looking at is to see if the null hypothesis, right, that's our test, here it is, that is independent versus dependent, that there's some relationship or no relationship. So you go to stat crunch and take a look at how this table is. It gets entered in here. So this is, uh, you want to be careful here how we do it. So you have this column here, right, your row data, the ones that go across. So got cold, did not get a cold. Placebo, the 20% of the drug, 60%, and then the outcomes here. So you created the table, right? You recreated this table here into stat crunch. And then here we're going to go stat tables. And then you go to contingency table, and we have the data summarized. And so the columns, right, are the placebo, 20%, 60%. The row labels, right, are the ones on the left side, the ones that are going across. That's our cold status. Did you get the cold or not? And that's it. And then you do it and you get a chi-squared value. It does the totals for you because that's what you would do if you had to do it by hand. It gets those values so you can see at least those results. Uh, but then here are the important results, the PP value and the test statistic, the chi-squared statistic. And so from there, this is where you get those values. And then we have those same decisions, right? Since the p-value is greater than our alpha, which was 0 0.05. If it wasn't stated, remember, that's what we assume. We fail to reject this. So we say that's true, and we don't think that's true. And so since we fail to reject it, there is insufficient evidence to show the drug. And Chinesia, can't say it, and getting a cold are dependent, meaning that doesn't look like that has an effect, right, on it. That drug it doesn't look like it's working there, okay? And so that's how we run a test for independence. Let's do a couple of more tests using StatCrunch. Uh, let's go back to a goodness of fit test, a quite chi-squared one. And so looking at this one here, um, uh, it's reasonable to uh, claim that births occur on different days with equal frequency. So thinking about how, how uh, many births right happen and, and do they happen on one day more than another, it would be reasonable to think that it happens equally across, right? That every day gets an equal amount of equal probability, right? So some data was collected. Uh, and so what we're interested in is, is it uh, the proportion of births the same across every day? That's our null hypothesis. Alternative is that at least one of the proportions is different, right? Then, then it's not equal across if one of them's different. So goodness of fit test, chi-squared goodness of fit test, GOF, alpha 0 0.01. That's what we're going to try to do here. Um, we check the requirements, right? There's a total of 723 observations. The data was collected, random data was collected, and what days birthdays births happen on. And that number, 773, is less than 5% of the population for sure. Um, it was randomly collected, right? Where it said randomly selected, and it's large enough. All the expected values are greater than 5. Now, the expected values, right? That's where I need to do a little calculation, right? Because we need expected values. Well, uh, let's make sure we know it's greater than 70, greater than 5, is what you would do is um, it's really just N times P, right? Uh, in this case, it's 773 times the fraction. P, again, is the proportion that we think if it was equal. So that would be 1 out of 7. And so our expected value is 104 in this case right here. That's our expected value there. And so that's greater than 5. And then we go ahead and you run the test, and then you get a chi-squared and a, and a um, p-value. Let's take a look. I have that data here. There's your my expected. 104 came again from 773 divided by 7 because of his equally distributed. And then stat... Um, goodness of fit chi-square, um, the observed is in the observed one I named it, that's an expected, and then you run it. And then again you go here, and so then you see uh, we end up with 
these values here. Okay. Um, and so you have um, um, these numbers here. There's your chi squared and p value, is what we got here. One, uh, um, 97, 0.097, and 0 0.01 is the alpha. So we have here your chi squared, your p value. Since the p value is smaller than alpha, we reject. We reject the null hypothesis, so we're rejecting this and saying that's true. So we do we do have sufficient evidence to claim that births are not equally distributed across the days. So for some reason, more uh, births happen differently across the days. They're not equally distributed, and so then that's your um, chi squared test. Um, there's another example here. I just want to show you the data here so you have it. It's another independence test for independence. You can take a look real quick. You can pause and look at these values, how I did the RL. Again, um, the total number is 760 and so forth. All are expected values, which um, in this case will, uh, um, if you do the calculations, when you do the row calculations would be there, would run the test here. And so again, to run the test, after we run the test, you get a chi-squared of 1.364, your p-value is 2.48, and so now we know the p-value is greater than alpha, 0 0.05, so we fail to reject, right? We're failing to reject this, and then we're rejecting this. So we think that there is no relationship between gender and handedness. It's kind of the same across the board. There's no, like, one uh, more male, more female are not left-handed, right? And so... One more time, just to finish this off, we will look here and we see, sorry, you enter the data into the table here. There's your gender, there's your um, column, and then we would do um, stat table, contingency with summary. And so in this case, the columns are the left in yes and left no. Uh, row labels is the gender, and then you just run it. And then there it is again. There's your p-value and uh, test statistic that we got. That's it. And then we have the conclusion. And then if you want to try on your own, see if you can get this chi-squared and p-value. See if you can do that correctly. That's it. Thank you.